votes. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, in its recently concluded continuous voter registration exercise, says 8,784,677 youth made up the 12,298,944 Nigerians who completed the voter registration process. And for some cross section or for a cross section of Nigerians, these numbers have far reaching implications for the forthcoming general election, especially if the youth can make the numbers count. Although Nigeria has witnessed a low turnout of registered youth voters during elections since 1999, will they now be able to overturn the 28% who voted at the 2019 election? How can political parties latch in on these numbers? to their advantage. Join us, so joining us now to discuss this via Zoom from our Abuja studio is Dr. Umar Tanku Yakasai. He is the National Coordinator Grassroots Movement for Ashuaji Tinobu and Shetimites called GMAX. Thank you very much, Dr. Umar, for joining us at this time. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. So talking about the power of the youth now, we've seen a somewhat display of that, especially on social media. But what are your observations about how that has translated on the regular physical turf now that we've seen, especially as we, you know, count down to the forthcoming election? All right, so um, we all know that uh, all of those who constitute uh, voters within the age range of uh, youth and young people in Nigeria are the highest. And not only now, since uh, the beginning of democracy in Nigeria and to date, they contribute a sizable number to the total voters that have been registered in the country. However, we all know that they can only contribute through the voting or adoption of a candidate that can look at the issues of young people in Nigeria and give it priority and address them. So uh, these numbers can translate positively for any candidate that has the ability to harness this segment of the society through programs that uh, will address issues around young people's concerns. And uh, I'm telling you, uh, with the current leadership of the uh, youth leader in the uh, All Progressive Congress, in the presence of Dr. Dai of Israel, and uh, the antecedents of uh, Asiwaju Wala Metinumbu in Lagos and uh, in the Sojourn in politics, having given opportunity for young people to rise and become somebody in Nigeria. I think uh, voters of this age range would, should be able to mobilize themselves and demand some other things in addition to whatever uh, these two organs plan for them. And that is how we can <clears throat> get the youth to translate that strength into something positive in the forthcoming election in 2023. All right, uh, Umar, the, it is quite encouraging that we have this number of people who have registered. Uh, from, from your opinion and assessment, what do you think is responsible for this uh, spike in the passion to get registered and uh, be in the number? Now, over time, we know that uh, vote should count. That has been the argument. That has been the point that young people have become bursted. And gradually, with the improvement of the Electoral Act uh, in this country, uh, passed by the National Assembly and uh, implemented by the Independent National Electoral Commission, it is becoming obvious that young people's votes will count. Not only young people, anybody who has an opportunity to vote in the 2023 election will count. We've seen that uh, in Ekiti, uh, we've seen that in Oshun, and therefore young people are beginning to see that it matters. Vote count. So that is the that is the upside. That is the reason. Well, um, the, a lot has been made about the numbers of the, um, the young. Uh, in this uh, election. But uh, is this really new? Because uh, last, uh, last time, as the last election, it was about 84 million 
uh, people on the uh, voters uh, list. And uh, the percentage of voters were very small, but, but uh, the number of the percentage of youth was so, also so sizable. And what we have is just 8 million. 8 million has been made, has made a lot of noise about. But 8 million is, um, is nothing compared to 96 million in the whole uh, uh, voters list. Are we making too much of this? Uh, so you, you see, at every election year, there are certain issues that matter that gives a lot of voters the interest to want to come in and uh, cast their vote and uh, exercise their democratic right. And uh, we believe that this time around, um, the numbers are going to increase because of the interest of young people to have their words, you know, and their voices heard in the coming election. So even though in the past, uh, these numbers that you've given are low, but you've seen that this time around, the interest has been ignited and uh, it should be a different uh, ball game. Dr. Omar, so what are you, you know, bringing now to add value or to further harness the power of the youth through your GMAT uh, initiative? Of course, it is also targeted at the grassroots where we see many of the youth also, you know, playing a role or the other, even though some may say, you know, truthfully that they may not have been given you know, as much opportunity in running for office. But on the grassroots now, how are you um, hoping to tap the potential of the youth and use for your gains? So when you look at uh, grassroots mobilization, it entails first organization. And that organization can only happen if you have an organized structure that first of all interface and engage with majority youth who have PVCs and will be voting. The first thing we've done is to create structures to be able to reach out to young people across the polling unit, polling stations, and wards to tell them that it is high time for them to come together and uh, look at the issues within their own locality and begin to synthesize them and collate them. And our responsibility is to begin to collate these things at various uh, local government and state and ensure that both the candidate and the party adopt some of these uh, demands to be addressed. Now, that is giving an opportunity to contribute. And anybody who will give an opportunity to contribute will, of course, have interest and will begin to mobilize towards the 2023 election. So that is what we are doing, sensitizing them, telling them that these are the opportunities you have to make your voices heard, make some demands, and use it to hold whoever emerges, which, of course, inshallah, will be Bola Metinumbu in the coming election 2023, uh, hold him accountable, hold his government accountable, hold us accountable when he succeeds because you've made this demand. So this is what we are doing, sensitization and generating uh, youth felt or young people's perceived ideas about what the country should look like, what programs should be addressed when the, the government comes to place, rather than top-down policy uh, approach uh, that has happened in the past. So this is what we are doing. All right, uh, Dr. Yakesai, be, besides um, uh, campaigns and grassroots mobilization we have seen over the years, like Sam said earlier, every single year we see numbers of new people coming on board to be registered, but on the day of election, we still see people who are voter illiterate, who don't know what to do, how to go about a lot of things, and then we also see reduced numbers of voters out there at the polling uh, uh, booths and polling stations. Now, how do we begin to change that in such a way that voters are educated enough, they are literate enough to be passionate, to stay close to what it takes to see an election to a conclusion and then be part of the process so that we don't see the numbers only in the INEC register, but we see them also uh, on the polling booths? Yeah, so the, the only way to achieve that is if we move from uh, social media campaigns, campaigns on mainstream media, where the passing of message is more or less from one person who is the sender to the other person who is a receiver. This approach we've taken through grassroots mobilization gives an opportunity for engagement, for discussion, and for young people at that level 
see that as a structure through which you can engage with the leadership, you can engage with the candidate, even though it's indirectly, and they will now see that somebody or the candidate, as well as Tinubu, has some uh, uh, people who are the grassroots who are listening to them, engaging with them. And when their issues are synthesized and uh, this will now put it on the media, they will see that the candidate and the party are talking to the issues that they have raised at this various uh, opportunities that we have provided at the grassroots movement. They will pick interest. They would now want to see that because uh, APC and the candidate is the only party that has done that, they will work towards uh, ensuring that they win, or this party win, or our candidate win, and uh, hold it accountable. So they will come out on the day of election, early in the morning, queue, make sure they vote, and I remain at the end to ensure that what they have voted counts and is what is uh, reflected on the people. So this is the strategy we are adopting, engaging them, giving them hope, direct contact, so that they will be uh, not disenfranchised, but enfranchised, motivated uh, to be able to come on that day. Only through engagement, only through direct contact, face to face, that you'll be able to give people hope and that uh, they will see a person, not a story on the media, on the radio, and uh, without them having to contribute to the discussion. That is the role we are playing, grassroots engagement. Thank you so much. Have you done a, a clear demographic of uh, the youth from region to region, from state to state, so as to inform you of uh, your strategy? to approach mobilizing them for the polls and to get a pulse of uh, where they are thinking and feeling uh, about the political process and the political candidates? Of course, you know, um, when you do landscape analysis, you look at associations of young people in the community, uh, activists in the community, and the people that were using at the grassroots. I'm not going to be anywhere to reverse to do that. It is people that are in the locality, whom they know, whom they relate with, that are used in this kind of organization and address mobilization. So the strategy is to see somebody that they know discussing with them on the issue of the candidature and what program they feel should be addressed by this candidate, as well as Metinimu, if he emerges. And so that is what we are doing. And uh, we don't speak English. We speak uh, the local dialect for the people there if you are from Hausa speaking place, the people will be talking to you in Hausa. If you are in a Yoruba speaking place, if you are in Igbo speaking place, if you are in Tigo Idoma, you know, all these conversations are happening in the language in which you understand, not simple grammar or English that we you know, blow on the social media. And so that is the strategy. People that are physical, that are in the environment, are the people we are using to engage with young people and they will listen to them. Already some of them are their leaders in their community. So that's what we are doing. That's the strategy. And I don't want to say so much so that uh, the PDP and other parties will not steal uh, this strategy. When you ask me about strategy and when we discuss it to a detailed level, some people can just uh, adopt it. So, but this is a few of the strategy we are adopting. Right. So you've, you've spoken about uh, reaching out to the youth. But, you know, one wonders, and that is where I'm, I'm headed now, how or what category of youth are you reaching out to? Because um, you know, one can you know, safely run with the fact that reaching out to APC youth might not be as important as reaching out to other sections uh, where youth uh, you know, largely dominate, perhaps social media, and even on the, on the physical level now, how are you reaching out to non-party members? Is that you know, among your core priorities too? You see that certain, uh, if you categorize Nigerians, there are those who are partisan politicians and belong to parties, and they aspire to contest. There are another segment, there are party loyalist members whose business is belong to party and contribute to party's progress and vote and mobilize for the party. And a large chunk of young people and many voters in Nigeria do not belong to political parties. They are just ordinary Nigerians. Uh, who have the right to exercise their fundamental human right of uh, voting. And so that is, we our appeal and reach out is not limited to APC, uh, because on the day of election, it's not only young people that belong to uh, registered APC members. We are looking at young people who constitute majority 
in the society that they're not even willing to party. They just go about their normal business 18 years and above. And not only that, uh, in, in, in when you come to election, election campaign, you don't even want to say you are limiting your reach out to only members of your party or general public. You even want to reach out to people who belong to PDP, who belong to NMPP, who belong to any other party to tell them that uh, the our party will do you better and on the day of election, I think it's better to vote uh, our candidates who are you than your own candidate. And you'll be surprised that some young people based on policy may even not vote their own party, but rather vote our own party. So mobilization is beyond party members, it's the general public, especially 18 and above. And the Nigerian national aid policy even defines the youth up to the age of 35, even though in the international arena, is uh, around 18 to 24. So those are the kind of people who are reaching out, and it's cut across party line and non-partisan young people who are doing their business in society. When it comes to voting, you want to reach out to anybody who has a PPC and a fundamental right to uh, participate and uh, cast his vote that day. So our reach is beyond party members. Of course, party members are committed to voting their own party, so they are only speaking or uh, preaching to the combatant. So that's our, our intention, to reach out beyond party cross-party lines and general population. All right, uh, Dr. Yakasai, we often talk about the issue of a youth participation in governance and even in politics. Uh, right now, from, from the Nigerian youth that you see and assess, uh, I believe that you, you know some of the edges they have in which, uh, which can be taken advantage of or some of the shortcomings they have which they need to work on. Can you draw attention to some of these uh, dynamics that uh, keeps this debate on the front burner every time? All right. So, um, you see, over time, uh, we've seen political parties and leaders giving opportunities that belong to youth, to other people who are above the age range of young people. But this time around, uh, the All Progressive Congress Party has done so well by voting a young person who is eminently qualified, an erudite uh, young person who was at a point in time a leader of youth uh, uh, children's parliament. You can imagine his age and uh, his pedigree who was rising through the rank and file of youth movement in this country. And he's now the leader of the, 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 the youth leader of the APC. And that person has been given um, opportunity to mobilize young people across the age and below. And uh, so the party has started through the, 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 the voting of, of the young person to lead that. And this is what is going to happen across uh, all the APC structures in the state. And it's not only one person that is voted. The party is moving towards doing uh, an opportunity for the youth leader, Dayo Israel, to create a department, uh, young people who come in and participate at the level of the party, the national, at the state, at the world, and the local government level. So the process has started giving opportunity for young people. Rather than voting one person as a youth leader, they're creating a directorate where most young people can, be, can go there, migrate, populate it, and lead their own agitations and uh, campaign for the party. So I think there are a lot of changes, and the party has started on a good way. And also the candidate himself, in his antecedents in Lagos as a governor and, and, and a depot activist, young people have been given opportunity today. Look at what they have become in this country. Many of them are governors, ministers, head of parasocials, and uh, what have you, to the highest echelon of society. So this is the strategy we are adopting, and, um, and the party has started with the voting of Dr. Dai in Israel. Um, are you guys in the mobilization um, arms of... Uh, Politics, looking at the prospect of youth and violence uh, in the coming months, because some people are saying that uh, this is something that might erupt. Uh, are you guys uh, thinking about it and uh, thinking about uh, what to do in case it happens to prevent it or manage it? Yeah, you know, uh, as a medical doctor who knows about disaster management, uh, prevention of disaster or conflict is the best form of uh, intervention. And so therefore, part of the grassroots mobilization we're doing, we created uh, a directorate that looks at uh, how are these violent agitations coming up, who are the key players, and in selecting uh, 
grassroots mobilizers or the team that will work with these young people. This is a critical area that we also engage in, uh, discussing with people who in the society have been known uh, to belong to that category of segment of the young people, to reach out to them that um, violence does not have anybody, conflict does not have anybody, all the issues that they think are germane to them that made them to pick up uh, alternative means of dispute and conflict resolution are not the best. That is not done in a civilized, more organized way that is result-oriented. So what we are doing is uh, not limited. Those people who cause conflict are young people, and they will listen to young people when they discuss with them, and they have leadership. If you don't know, they may not be formal. They're as informal as they are. They are organized. They have leadership. And when you reach out, anybody who is in politics that wants to mobilize these categories of people goes through them, either for good or for bad. And if you want to correct these tendencies in the coming election, you reach out to the leaders and discuss with them. Some of them listen. You could see that uh, many of those groups that used to exist in Lagos, you know, when... Abola uh, Hamechidungu became the governor of Lagos. He addressed these young people who before an area that you cannot go to, or really, you know, Badagri, or what is the other place, that like Oshoji. And they engaged them. They discussed with the leaders. Don't give up doing violence. Why can't you be gainfully employed in the society? And those areas were clean. Those orders were clean. Those young people were transformed and given opportunities. Some of them organized themselves as ones that collect taxes from Okadas, from unorganized Okadas, and boxes, and what have you. They can be engaged. And that's what we are telling them. It has happened in Lagos. It can happen in Nigeria. Uh, a lot of conflict resolution that happened in the Niger Delta. It's true engagement. Those people who come out from the creeks to have a conversation and drop arms and engage in arms exchange. Right. You know, they, it's true discussion. Thank you very much. Right. Dr. Umar, on a final note, let's also um, hear you weigh the, you know, the candidacy of Ashura Jubola Tinobo against the other two uh, you know, candidate says that the, the Labour Party and the PDP, because, of, you know, despite the 20 in number of presidential candidate, it has been narrowed down to these three. How do you weigh the opposition against uh, the value of um, your candidate? I think, sorry, please, can you raise your voice? Right. Question again. So how do you weigh the opposition at this time now that, you know, everyone has, you know, pitched their tent with their preferred candidates? So you are with the Ashua Jishetima side. How do you weigh the other two uh, major opposition, talking about the Labour Party and the PDP? Yeah, um, you know, first of all, we in this country have had PDP rule for 16 years. And so we have a basis to compare, you know, between PDP and our own political party. And they have had opportunity to do the need for many of the things that have gone bad in this country, the bad uh, policies that they have initiated are things we are grappling with. And I don't think that anybody would want to go back to the PDP era, you know. And uh, also, the Labour Party yeah, was uh, barely on a paper registered in INAC. It was with the movement of uh, Peter Wynn to the party that we begin to hear about Labour Party, as uh, somebody has said. This party is uh, structuralist in many of the communities and the societies. And uh, I do not think that uh, in, within now and the next election, you'll be able to see anything change. So our party, currently as it is, has 22 seven a lot of senators, a lot of House of Reps, State Assembly members, local government chairmen. And uh, they're already on the ground. And uh, so they have the ability to reach out and discuss with people and converse or vote when the basis of the manifesto of our candidate on the manifesto of the party. And uh, I'm telling you that uh, that uh, PDB has nothing to say. APC is just coming. And uh, you have to have a structure to be able to, to, to win an election in this country. And uh, I don't see how that can happen between now and uh, six right. or seven months. All right, Dr. Umar Tango Yakasai, National Coordinator, Grassroots Movement for Ashwaju Tenobo and Shetima, we thank you very much for your contributions on TVC Breakfast. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.